Welcome to Atlanta, Georgia, outside the Georgia Dome. You're watching Citrus TV's preview coverage of the Final Four and National Championship. We'll take you to the surface where the NCAA will name its national champion this weekend. That's right, Kevin. Chris Lewis here inside the Georgia Dome, getting you ready for Syracuse versus Michigan. Of course, the Wolverines practicing right behind me, and the team have plenty to say about going up against that 2-3 zone. We'll be back right here in a little bit to give you a preview on Trey Burke, the guy who's racking in a team award after award, day after day. But first, we'll go back outside the dome for Kevin Barry. Since the Big East tournament, Syracuse has been playing well. So well, in fact, that it's created a lot of confidence around the SU program. So much confidence that Michigan is taking notice. From what everyone's been saying so far, they seem like they haven't really paid a lot of attention to anything that we've done. But, I mean, that's up to them. They can, they can look at us however they want. We know uh, we're confident in our abilities and we're going to come out and play our game. Michigan is a dangerous matchup for the Ards. The Cuse might have its size, length, and 2-3 zone, but Michigan has plenty of players who can shoot right over the top. Our job is just to try to, you know, just try to find different ways to attack the zone. We obviously have to knock down uncontested threes. Um, I think it's, um, we put in some sets that, you know, will allow us to get different looks against their zone. And, um, you know, it's just our job. You know, it's just the big's job to finish and the guard's job to knock down open shots. One key player in the matchup game for Michigan against Syracuse is Trey Burke. I feel like we're best when we're when we are running in transition. So, you know, our, you know, like I said, we just have to execute on the defensive end, um, try to keep them off the boards as much as possible, and um, get out and run. You know, I think we're we're really good when we're, we're capable of doing that. For a closer look on one player who could give Syracuse problems from behind the arc in the Final Four, we send it inside to Chris Lewis, the AP Player of the Year. The Wooden Award, the Oscar Robinson Award. It seems like every day Trey Burke is winning another honor here in Atlanta. And he might also have the shot of the NCAA tournament. About a 30-footer to put his team in a tie with Kansas and have Michigan advance to the Elite Eight round. So certainly Syracuse's 2-3 zone will be shifted to number three. And the evidence shows why. Trey Burke, one of the best players in the nation, his three-point percentage up to 38%, but Syracuse has been one of the best teams at defending the three-point, number one in the Big East at defending the threes this season. You also don't want to let Trey Burke get to the free throw line. He's 81% once he gets to the charity stripe. But those numbers can only tell you so much of the story. Coach Bayheim and the players have plenty to say about stopping Michigan's number three. Well, he's, a, he's a great player. He has a, a lot of expectations going in this game, and uh, the pressure's really on um, him, not really us. So, um, you know, he's great, and uh, we're just going to have to, you know, slow him down, try to make him turn the ball over a little bit. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to tag him on the uh, offense, man, make him play some defense. We go out there and um, stop him early, make him take tough shots, and also limit them from second chance opportunities. We'll be fine. I think if he, if he set the defensive tone early and uh, we get a few stops, not let them get any rhythm, I think. We can um, slow their scoring pace down. We're just gonna go ahead and play. You know, everything's just gonna be at that moment at the game. You know, when he's get the ball, we're just gonna, you know, add that bench on what he's doing. So we're just gonna, not gonna make any prediction right now. We're just gonna go ahead and play defense when he gets to the game. And Citrus TV's Final Four preview rolls along. Now we're joined by Len Robbins of the New York Post. Len, thanks for joining us on our Final Four preview. And our first question is about Rutgers. The uh, athletic director, Tim Bernetti, steps down today. Uh, how, how does that change this story now for the Scarlet Knights? Well, I actually hope it starts to put some closure on it. You know, look, I know Tim Pernetti pretty well. You know, he's a father. He has his own kids. You know, he is not a callous man, you know. And part of me respects the fact that he looked at the situation that he had and he said, let me see if I can rehabilitate this guy. I think clearly it was the wrong decision because an athletic director's job is to provide a safe, healthy nurturing environment for your student athletes. That has to be your credo. And he violated that. I mean, at the end of the day, trying to rehabilitate a coach on players' time was not the right call to make. And I think sadly he's paid a price for it. Now on to why we're in Atlanta, the Final Four. Syracuse plays Trey Burke, and he's had a pretty busy morning. He's already gotten some accolades so far. If you're gonna beat a Syracuse zone, you do it from behind the arc. How can Trey Burke do that for Michigan? 
Well, I think he can, and I think that this Michigan team matches up very well against the 2-3. I think this is the biggest challenge that Syracuse is going to face because you mentioned Trey Burke, and this guy can start shooting from Buckhead. I mean, that's the kind of range that he has. He can really pull this zone open. And with a guy like Glenn Robinson the third, they have someone who they can put at the high post and distribute and hit that foul line jump, and then they have the McGarry kid who they can stick down low. So pick your poison now if you're Syracuse. Do you extend and try and come out on Hardaway and Trey Burke? Or do you pack it in and let those guys, you know, take their shots? I think it's a bad matchup for Syracuse. I'm not saying they're not going to win the game. I think equally as important and maybe more important is, can Syracuse please stop going on these five, six, seven, eight-minute coffee breaks on offense? Because <laughs> if you do that against Michigan, you're not going to win. Great. Len Robbins, New York Post, thank you very much for your time. And our Final Four preview rolls along right here for Citrus TV. Sure, there's plenty of fans watching practice here at the Georgia Dome, but there's so much to do here in Atlanta for the Final Four. For a look at some of the other events going on across the city, we'll send it to Heather Prusak. Right now, we're at the Georgia World Congress Center for a special fan experience. It's called Bracket Town. So let's go take a look and see just what's behind these doors for fans when they walk in. As soon as fans come through here, punch their ticket, the first thing they see, they're greeted by this screens highlights of all four teams Syracuse Wichita State Louisville and Michigan but that's not even the coolest part let's go take a look and see just what's waiting for fans when they walk through these gates static watching them. Uh, we we're just we were great having our kids be able to come here and see it. So 10 years later, we're hoping they can do it again. And you said you know, were an SU grad. How exciting is this for you to not only see Syracuse this year, but to know that you graduated from this school? Absolutely. I mean, that's, I, I mean, aside from meeting my wife there, we had a great time at Syracuse. We loved it. We get back to a couple of games in the Dome every year whenever we can. This is our first game this year, though, so best game to be at. Any crazy uh, road trip experiences that you ran into on your travels? Uh, no, not too bad getting here. We had a pretty smooth time getting here, but uh, other than, you know, get, taking our kids to all the parks at Disney, which is probably the craziest part of the road trip so far. Now, Jim Beheim actually said after the Elite Eight game that he was supposed to go to Disney World the next morning with his family. and. You know, it's so a little bit of a similar experience for you. I'm sure he's not too disappointed to be here instead. <laughs> As I'm sure you are too. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Bill, here at Bracket Town, catching up with some of the fans Go in orange. the Final Four. Go Orange. Looks so fun out here, Kev. I decided to join you. It's nice to be in the sun once in a while. Well, we we're both inside enough this week, enough to hear all the things that these players and coaches have said this week. So what stood out the most to you? I think that overconfidence. We were talking about it before. Syracuse has played so well through the Big East tournament and the NCAA tournament. They ran through a team like Indiana, who everybody thought not only were they not going to run through them, but they weren't even going to play them close. Syracuse ends up winning that, running through Marquette. They're on a high now. Not that a Final Four game is ever going to be a trap game, yeah. But if, if, if 
ever, if ever there was one, Syracuse is on that high right now. I think they need to be careful. At this point, overconfidence would be hard to, to have considering the player of the year and the guy who's getting every award it seems is Trey Burke. But this team just does have a lot more than Burke. You have Tim Hardaway Jr. Glenn Robinson III is another player on this Michigan team that gets a lot of minutes. And Nick Stauskas, this guy was incredible against Kansas and against Florida in the regionals, hitting every three. So I think to me that's the one thing that stood out is the ability for this Michigan team. They're more adaptable and they like to mention the fact that they are very adaptable. Well, the Syracuse game plan is to not be adaptable. They play Syracuse basketball and you either beat it or you don't and most of the times you end up not beating it. Yeah, and John Beeline is going to have to come up with a way. Remember, he was the coach at Lemoyne, got a chance to see a lot of Jim Beheim's 2-3 zone. So that'll be one thing we'll be looking forward to the most when this game gets underway. It's almost here, the Final Four.